Okay. So, do we have everybody on right now? I know we're getting ready to start. Um, let's, if you don't mind, Chair Navarro, let's give it just a minute so that Brent can return and okay. show his camera. Okay. Brent and William. There's Brent. Hi, Brent. Good evening. Okay. And we do we do have all the commissioners present, right? Except no. for Commissioner Gall. Okay. So technically it's I've got six twenty nine, so since it's advertised as starting at six thirty, if you don't mind sure. waiting. We'll wait. We'll wait. So we're good to go. Okay, <clears throat> so I think we have everybody. Yes, I believe we do, Chair. Wow. Okay. So I will pull up the agenda and Okay. So I um good afternoon everybody, evening. Uh this is the um the March 25th meeting of the Planning Commission. And I am going, Tyrone Navarro, the chair, and I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Secretary Jones, could you call, do a roll call please? Yes, um, Commissioner Altman. Present. Commissioner Wong. Present. Vice Chair Malari. Present. Chair Navarro. Present. And Commissioner Goff is absent. Got it. Okay. So with that, um, I will lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the, of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. So, uh, shall I, shall I uh, read about public comment or do you wanna go uh, next? Uh, do you mind if I read some opening statements? Please do. Okay. Thank you for joining us for the March 25th, 2021 City of American Canyon Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is being held entirely virtually in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The format for tonight is similar to that of an in-person planning commission meeting. In addition to Zoom, the meeting is being broadcast on cable TV channel 28 on YouTube and streamed live on the city's website. You will see members of the planning commission as well as members of city staff on the screen. All members of the public will participate in listen only mode. Public comment is invited for non agenda items during the public forum section of the meeting and on each agenda item. When the item you wish to speak on is called, please follow these steps to make your comment. When the chair calls a particular item and you wish to speak on that item, please click the raise hand button if joining by computer. If joining by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. When it is your turn, I will announce your name and invite you to speak. You may see a message saying the host would like you to unmute yourself. If you receive this message, please click unmute myself and begin speaking. To unmute yourself by phone, dial star, star six and begin speaking. Video will not be turned on, only audio. You have up to three minutes to make your comments to the planning commission. At the end of your three minutes, I will ask you to conclude your comments quickly and I will mute your audio once you're done. Please only press star nine and raise your hand for the items you wish to speak on as the raised hands will be cleared at the end of each item. The agenda for this meeting is available on the city's website 
as is standard practice, committee members are allowed to comment one time on each agenda item. All items for tonight, or all votes for tonight's meeting will be taken by roll call. We ask for your patience and understanding when there are technical difficulties. This concludes my opening remarks. Okay, thank you. So uh, I uh, will speak to public comment. Uh, public comment section is noted on the agenda. This is a time for members of the public uh, who may uh, comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this section cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission during this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the appropriate time. It is very important to speak directly into the microphone. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Okay. With that, um, do we have public comment? We do not have any public comment at this time. Nobody's raised their hand. If there is anybody in attendance who would like to make general public comment for a non-agendized item, please raise your hand at this time. Seeing nobody raise their hand, Chair Navarro. Okay, thank you. So, um, any agenda changes, uh, Director Cooper? Um, Chair Navarro, we have no agenda changes tonight. Okay. Great. So I, we can move on then to the consent calendar. We have one item um, and I'm looking to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, February 25th, 2021 commission meeting. I will uh, make said motion to approve the minutes of the February 25th, 2021 planning commission meeting. Okay, is there a second? A second. Okay, Secretary Jones, roll call, please. Yes, Commissioner Altman. Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Commissioner Wong. Aye. Vice Chair Malari. Aye. Chair Navarro. Aye. Okay. All right, looks like we're ready to go into a pretty large public hearing of multiple items. Um, so we have before us a presentation that encompasses several different uh, items. It looks like nine items mm -hmm. for approval, um, separate approval is my understanding. Uh, so we have uh, general plan amendments, and uh, negative declaration and uh, permit maps and zone changes. So um, there's a lot, a lot to be done in this one item. So with that, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Director Cooper. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair Navarro and uh, members of the Planning Commission, uh, Brent Cooper, Community Development Director. Um, thank you. I was just uh, contemplating tonight's uh, meeting um, obviously Watson Ranch is a bigger project, but I can't think of a time when we've had nine individual resolutions for the Planning Commission to consider in a single item. So congratulations, I think this is a record. Um, <laughs> but um, we have a lot of staff available tonight. Um, uh, to, in support of this, we have our new uh, Public Works Director, Erica Smithies, she's here tonight. Um, and then um, we have also uh, George Apple uh, from the fire district. He is the uh, a review um, consultant for, for the fire district. Um, we also have Paul Wade. He is a public works uh, a contractor for development review. Um, and uh, Rod Stinson, he prepared the environmental document. Um, and then the applicant also has a variety of consultants in support of the project as well. So um, hope we have all the uh, uh, folks here that can answer what I'm sure will be your questions. Um, but uh, William, he has uh, been in charge of the project and he has a presentation to give you an overview of the project. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. He and he can um, uh, walk you through the presentation. Okay. Great. Thank you, Brent. Uh, let me pull up the PowerPoint. Uh, 
All right. Can everybody see okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Navarro, members of the Planning Commission, and members of the public. Uh, my name is William. Very happy to be here today to give a presentation on the Oat Hill Project. Um, uh, this is the my agenda for the project. It is pretty packed, but it's a big project, and I want to be as as thorough as I can for uh, for showing the, the features of, of these uh, of the Oat Hill project. Uh, I want to start with the vicinity map and the project location. Also, we'll go through the project description and some zoning information. Then I have some photos as well as a site plan and some, some of the architecture drawings. Uh, then we will move on to the site specific issues and the uh, public comments that occurred during the uh, CEQA public notice period. Um, lastly, I want to uh, uh, talk about some of the applicants' public outreach efforts, and then we have our staff recommendation and also the CEQA uh, compliance report. So uh, to begin, here's the vicinity map. The project site is shown in red. It is uh, up on Oat Hill, just uh, east of the, our smaller water tank. Um, together, both parcels are about 20.8 acres. Um, the larger parcel, parcel A, is about 13 acres, and parcel B is at 7.2 acres. Um, to the south is uh, mostly vacant uh, land, and to the east, we have some single-family residences uh, and then north, we have some light industrial uh, uses. Um, the site is accessible from uh, uh, Napa Junction Road via Hess Road, and it's uh, west of Highway 29. So here's the project description in a nutshell. Um, for the general plan amendment and zone change, um, the project is proposed to become uh, high density residential for parcel A and medium density residential for parcel B. Uh, the design permit uh, consists of 206 dwelling units on 13.6 acres for parcel A and then 85 units uh, on parcel B. Uh, the proposed use is uh, multifamily residential condominiums and uh, parcel A features 13 buildings, one rec building with a swimming pool, uh, about 450 parking spaces, and about 2.1 acres of landscaping. Uh, parcel B is five, uh, five residential buildings, one rec building, recreation building, 182 parking spaces, about 1.05 acres of landscaping. So, uh, I do want to remind the, uh, the Planning Commission uh, their role in the general plan amendment policy decision. Uh, back in about a year ago in January 2021, uh, 2020, the City Council approved a resolution that declared that residential uses are the best use of the property on Oak Hill. Uh, the resolution endorsed residential uses, but not a specific uh, density to the project. So uh, the Planning Commission in its advisory role to the City Council has the authority to independently evaluate and advise the Council on the general plan amendment proposal. So here's kind of like the, uh, the elephant in the room. Why so many applications? So uh, here's a brief overview of what's uh, the project entails. Um, the initial study and mitigated negative declaration uh, is required so that we can ensure the project complies with the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA. Um, the general plan amendment and zone change is required because currently uh, parcel A is in the light industrial specialty commercial okay. district and it does not permit uh, multifamily residential. Uh, parcel B is in the residential estate district, and it doesn't have the uh, density that the uh, applicant proposed. But with the proposed change from, uh, from parcel A to high density and parcel B to medium density, 
the project can proceed. Um, thirdly, we have the tentative maps. Those are, um, uh, the applicant applied for those so that they can have an option to convert the, the, the uh, apartments to condos in the future. And lastly, the, uh, the design permits is uh, to make sure that the project complies with zoning code and general plan policies. There's actually a, a tenth application, which is a lot line adjustments to reconfigure the lots, but uh, you guys are spared for that one. That one's administratively processed. So uh, here's um, a, an image that shows how the general plan uh, amendment to parcel A will look. On the left, we have the existing uh, configuration where the top half of parcel A is in the light industrial specialty uh, uh, commercial district, whereas the kind of like the lower third is it, it's in the residential estate. With the proposed amendment, uh, that entire parcel uh, will become high density residential. And that's uh, it, on the right picture shows it in the darker brown. So if you do it with, if you uh, proceed with that for the general plan, you have to do the same for the zoning, uh, zoning map change. And similarly, uh, the process for uh, parcel B on the left, we have it in the tan color, which is residential estate right now. And the proposed change is to change it into medium uh, density residential, which is uh, the same zoning district as the uh, parcel south of it. So again, if you do it, a general plan amendment to the parcel, you have to do the same for the zoning map change. So here is a, uh, an overview of the parcel A site plan. Uh, the applicant has uh, preliminarily named the buildings just after letters, the 13 buildings. Site access is off of Napa Junction Road and um, the rec building is in the center of the site and the, um, our, our city's water tower is uh, right uh, in the northern middle of it. Here's parcel B. Um, is the lower parcel. It is uh, again accessible from Napa Junction Road, has five buildings and a rec building in the, uh, I guess that would actually be the east, eastern side of the site. Uh, I want to share some site photos that uh, uh, the applicant provided. This is uh, kind of standing the top photo is kind of standing uh, in parcel B actually looking up nice. towards um, Oat Hill. The lower left photo is uh, kind of standing in the middle of parcel A looking up at the um, water tower. Um, the lower middle is uh, is a, a photo of towards the middle of the site looking south um, uh, and the lower right is a photo of uh, as a point of view from Napa Junction Road. So uh, it's a vacant site. Uh, um, there has not been development there um, for a very long time. And here is uh, two more photos, uh, one from the middle of the area of the property and one uh, from the main property facing north. Uh, and you can see the, the wetlands from a big distance. Um, the applicant has provided some photo simulations, and here is a view from Highway 29 um, towards the uh, uh, railroad bridge, and um, you can see oh, uh, the, our water tower in the uh, right side of the screen, and here's how the proposed um, uh, apartments will look like uh, if they were to proceed. Uh, Here's a second photo. It's a view from the intersection of Napa Junction Road and Highway 29. This is the, the vacant lot in front of City Hall. Um, and you can see the, the hillside in the far distance. And this is how it will look um, if, uh, if the apartments were to proceed. Uh, the photographer was nice enough to remove 
the uh, tower here so you can see the apartments better. Um, so and next I have the architecture. Here is the 12 uh, unit uh, design. They have two designs, one's for 12 and one's for 17 units. Uh, the 12 unit design uh, is done uh, in the farm, modern farmhouse style, has fully functional balconies, um, a hip roof, and uh, well articulated in, in trees. Uh, similarly, here is the 17 unit version. And I uh, want to talk a little bit about the landscaping. The applicant provided a preliminary landscaping plan. Um, the setbacks are going to be um, supported with uh, landscaping trees, ground cover, and shrubs. And um, the parking lot within will also have um, many of the landscaping trees. Some of the uh, most uh, uh, predominant species are going to be the trident maple, uh, coast live oak, crepe myrtles, and the uh, Keith Davy Chinese pistache. Uh, and, and the applicant will be providing a more uh, final uh, landscaping plan prior to the construction uh, permits. So here is parcel A, and here is parcel B for their preliminary landscape plans. Next, we want to move on to some of the site-specific issues. Um, the first one would be the airport land use compatibility plan. Uh, the, the portion of parcel A in the north, there is a portion that is in the airport land use plans uh, zone D, in which uh, it says that um, uh, residential buildings are not normally uh, permitted. So uh, the portion that that is in question are the three buildings M, L, and K in the northern side. And the, excuse me, those three, um, those three buildings would equate to about 51 units. Um, and the, the main concern for the D zone is noise. Um, the applicant has, uh, has conducted a noise study that's shown that would um, the airport would not uh, impact the residences there, but they have also for land use commission, and which um, we're work, uh, staff is working with the applicant on submitting uh, a pa application package to the uh, ALOC. So that's the uh, specific issue one. Um, specific issue two is affordable housing. Uh, housing is a very important issue for the city. Uh, the municipal code requires um, apartment developments to provide 15% of units as affordable housing, or uh, in this case for the Old Hill project, it will be 44 units. Uh, the applicant uh, provided a housing marketing study um, that explained that uh, if they were to provide those 44 units, it would uh, render the project financially infeasible. Um, the applicant requests the city council to allow the payment of an in-lieu fee instead of the, the units. And um, that is something that the city council will have to consider. Next, uh, issue number three will be um, access. So one of the items that uh, that would help the project uh, and is necessary for the project is to complete the extension. Uh, there's this gap between um, Hess Road and uh, uh, it's Napa Junction Road's extension, but it's the gap between the Hess Road and the um, uh, the current elementary school area. So on, I have three different pictures for you. On on the left, I have a plan view of uh, what the Napa Junction Road extension uh, will be. And on the lower right, I have a uh, cross section of the preliminary cross section in which uh, the applicant proposes a two lane road with two bike lanes, uh, one on each side and a single parking lane. Um, and then the, 
I, I found this picture on Google Maps. This is at the end of the road at the uh, uh, elementary school. And as you can see right now, there's there's no road that can get, get Napa Junction to continue westward, uh, but the project will help uh, develop that uh, extension. And lastly, there is the um, there is the the issue of the uh, views views and the public access trail. So, um, uh, in the general plan, the where the parcel A is in uh, the light industrial uh, district, it's always been envisioned that the any new development will take advantage of the view sheds from that area, and uh, what. What the applicant has proposed, um, the project, many of the apartment uh, or condominium buildings do have views uh, that can, uh, you know, see to the east and, and the southeast and, and north. Um, but in addition to the orientation of the buildings, they are going to provide a uh, community uh, public access trail. Um, they're calling it the community um, loop walkway and it's highlighted in yellow here. I've also added some stars on the map and that's where the um, public lookout points will be. They have five proposed right now. And um, they actually took this, um, uh, this uh, proposal to the Open Space Advisory Committee, I think it was this, uh, two weeks ago, and uh, the applicant was there to, uh, to answer questions and uh, it was, uh, seen pretty favorably by the OSI. So those are the site specific issues. And we have some public comments from the public comment period for the uh, mitigated negative declaration. We had four comments. One was from Caltrans that wanted a clarification of the study area. Um, the applicant has responded to that in the response to comments and they found that there would be no change to the adequacy of the mitigated negative declaration. Uh, we had a comment from the Fish and Wildlife uh, Group uh, agency that wanted us, that wanted the applicant to revise their um, biology resource uh, mitigation measures in which they, uh, they complied. And one of the main concerns was that they wanted the uh, Pre-construction bird surveys to be, have like a, a bigger radius from like a quarter mile to half a mile. And the, that has been updated in the response to comments. We did have, have a resident that was concerned about the traffic uh, on uh, Napa Junction and, and Lombard and the, uh, and also was, was uh, concerned about the new, new apartments will bring more, uh, or kids to our school district. And uh, for that comment, the applicant uh, explained that the, in accordance to the traffic impact analysis, there, there will not be any new delays to the Napa Junction and Bombard intersection. Uh, and as for the, um, the school impact, the applicant is ready to pay all uh, the appropriate school impact fees to the uh, Napa Valley Unified School District. Um, the last comment was a letter of support from a property owner, and that was and that was it for the thirty days of the comment period. Um, speaking about uh, letters of support, the applicant did uh, conduct their own uh, public outreach efforts in September and October of twenty twenty. They. Uh, uh, provided letters to neighbors within the 300 uh, feet radius. And actually they went a little bit above and beyond that radius, uh, provided plans and photo sims in advance. And uh, I think Mr. Uh, Rick Hess and his team met with neighbors in person. Um, uh, they were able to garner uh, five letters of support, which is in the attachment, uh, in attachment one of the staff report. So environmental determination, um, the, we, we did the initial study and the, uh, the MND, and we found that there are no significant effects on the environment uh, 
once the project uh, complies with the mitigation measures. And the mitigation measures are uh, attached in the tentative map and also the design permit conditions of approval. So uh, with that being said, um, staff's recommendation is to uh, recommend the Planning Commission to recommend uh, approval of all nine of the resolutions. So that's my uh, condensed version of the 1800 page uh, staff report. Um, I will be available for questions and um, uh, happy to, uh, to answer any of them. Let me stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Mr. He. Um, you, you got covered a lot in a short period of time. Thank you. Um, I know it's a lot of work. Uh, any any questions or follow up from commissioners? Tammy, Commissioner Wong. Um, hi, thank you, um, William, for your report. Um, before I forget, I do want to disclose that I had a phone call with Mr. Hess and his son Tyler about the Oat Hill project. And I also visited the site earlier today, um, both Hess Road and Napa Junction Road. Um, that being said, William, um, I think your photos did not do the views justice. It's really beautiful up there with the views looking down Oat Hill and seeing the city below us. Um, I, I, I was interested to see your map about the extension be between the school, Napa Junction and Hess Road. This occurred to me when I was looking at it today. Um, do you know what the grade is or how steep is that, that extra bit of extension that will take it from Napa Junction to Hess? Because it looked like a small drop off there. Uh, I do not know exactly. Um, I would imagine it's like 25% or a bit more, but... Um. <laughs> well, Commissioner Wong, if I could maybe just jump in. Um, we haven't done any uh, specific design at this point. Um, I'm constantly amazed at the ingenuity of engineers to uh, work out design uh, challenges. Um, I know Mr. He had some graphics for mm -hmm. potential road design. Um, that is something from a few years ago, uh, back when the property on uh, Napa Junction Elementary School hadn't been envisioned to be closed. So mm -hmm. things are a little different today. Um, I believe the uh, condition is written that those specific design constraints and solutions would all get uh, ironed out um, after the project. Um, should it be approved and move forward, um, then they would kind of work in earnest on the engineering design of, of the road connection there. Um, may also do a PS on that too. It's also um, considered uh, one of the options in our Westside Connector roadway. Um, and so that may also play into the ultimate design as well. So a lot of things to kind of figure out um, in a more appropriate time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. And William, thank you for the great presentation on a very complex <laughs> project with many different moving parts. Thank you. So, Mr. Ross, perhaps I was remiss. Should I go? Should we all uh, express ex parte communication? Uh, I think that would be appropriate now be, uh, before you formally open the public hearing. Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, and so, for my um, point. I uh, have not had any ex parte communications, although I did receive a couple um, emails, um, and I um, and I forward those to um, to the director. But I have not had any communication with anyone else about this uh, project. Um, Commissioner Malari. Um, I myself have not had any communication. Um, I did walk out there this weekend, not just to take a look at the project, but also just to get some fresh air with my um, my children. So um, okay. that counts or not, but uh, <laughs> I know that spot exactly where it is at Water Hill. I used to run up that hill. Yeah, it's a nice area. Yeah. Commissioner Altman. Yes, thank you. Um, over my, 
many years on the uh, commission. I have uh, had a variety of conversations with uh, Mr. Hess, um, and we have spoken about this uh, project at various different points. Uh, most recently, I met with him, I believe it was last week, uh, to um, get a little additional uh, insight into what exactly he's looking to do here. So, Okay. okay. Um, are there any other questions from commissioners at this point? Okay, at this point, I, I think probably, um, should we hear from the applicant now, Mr. E, or take public comment? What would you? I think it would be good to have a couple words from Mr. Hess. Okay, Mr. Hess, you have the floor. Good evening, thank you for uh, uh, considering our application tonight and uh, I'm certain that all of you have had a chance to read the 1,800 pages that were uh, generated <laughs> for this uh, staff report and uh, know it thoroughly. Uh, you can imagine the amount of work and effort that, that we've put into this over the, the last year to uh, create all of the documentation uh, necessary, the reports and studies that went into this project. And uh, I would mention, most of you know my son Tyler, he and his wife are um, expecting their first child, uh, which will be my first grandchild. So if I get a call in the middle of this, you're going to have to, you're going to have to go on your own here, because <laughs> I'll be out of here. But uh, with, that, with that being said, uh, William, I think you did a great job in, in uh, condensing um, a lengthy report and study i was it was interesting to me as i was thinking about uh, tonight uh, as i was preparing i i thought back many years ago when uh, i first came to american canyon and started looking at uh, potential development there was at that time there was no safeway there was no walmart there was nothing in american canyon the city owned uh, the property where the library is now, as well as um, a portion of the property where Canyon Cor uh, Plaza sits. And they were looking for a developer to come in and, and uh, create a commercial development and have uh, West America Bank relocate so that they could turn what is now uh, the city library into city hall. And um, we took that on and... Uh, Back then, our application was such that the planning director at the time said, Rick, I guarantee within 30 days of you turning your application, we'll have approval of your project. And sure enough, on the 30th day, I stood before the planning commission and got unanimous approval for what is now Canyon, Corner, uh, Canyon Plaza. Uh, in 2005, we developed uh, Canyon Corners. And we're very proud of what it looks like. It was a, a real challenge uh, once we got our approvals trying to determine what the architectural look would be. There was no historical um, buildings or any landmarks that we could key off of. There was just nothing to tie into. And we spent a lot of time with multiple designers and architects and we ultimately came up with the idea of capturing the Napa Valley um, uh, agricultural heritage of the Napa Valley. And we came up with the farm style buildings that we have there at Canyon Plaza. And I was really pleased when the Broadway specific plan kind of focused in and said, that's what we're looking for, for development along 29 is we'd like to stay with the uh, farm style architecture. Uh, with our current project, I believe that we've captured that and, uh, and is a, a continuation on of, of what was approved for the Broadway specific plan, uh, as well as our other projects that we um, currently have being the Canyon Plaza and Canyon Corners. Um, many of you probably weren't even here in 1999 when uh, we started down this path. So 
Um, I've had the advantage of, of seeing American Canyon uh, grow to where it is today. And I look forward to, you know, the next 10 years, I think a lot of really positive things and, and uh, you know, with the development of Watson Ranch, as well as uh, the development of our project here at Oat Hill, um, I, uh, I, I think that uh, there's going to be great things ahead for American Canyon. And I look forward to being part of that and providing additional developments and, and opportunities for the citizens in, in our community. Um, as I look, uh, the other one, uh, project that I'd like to point out that we uh, designed and developed was the uh, Lombard Crossing industrial buildings at the end of Lombard. And I might be prejudiced, but I believe that they are maybe some of the best looking industrial buildings that we have in our city. And, and uh, we worked on that when Brent uh, was first uh, became uh, planning director and, and we drove all around the airport and Green Island Road and, and, uh, and discussed. And with Brent's help, we ended up coming up with, uh, with a design for that Lombard Crossing. And, and I'm, I'm proud of, of all the projects that we've been able to uh, build and, and uh, hang on to there in, in American Canyon. What uh, uh, I believe that, that with the architectural design that, that uh, William had shown you, uh, the goal of our general plan was to create uh, articulation in our buildings, uh, provide um, architectural relief. And I think that we've worked really hard with our architects and engineers to capture uh, the goals, stated goals of the general plan um, that we've had. Uh, we, were, we certainly have worked countless hours with uh, multiple governmental agencies um, and engineers and consultants to uh, come to where we are today with this project. And um, I believe that we have, uh, again, we've, we've uh, our site layout, um, I think we've met uh, the goals and objectives of the general plan and the Broadway specific plan. I wanted to highlight uh, a couple of things that I think that are important for you to keep in mind. Uh, uh, William touched on it back in uh, January of last year. We did come before the Planning Commission with the resolution. Uh, it was determined that nobody really in the city or the community wanted to see more warehouses up on top of Oat Hill and that the industrial uh, zoning that we currently have there was probably not the highest and best use for the property. And the planning commission unanimously approved that housing was the highest and best use, uh, as well as when we went to the city council, they also unanimously uh, approved the resolution. The um, I also wanted to uh, uh, touch on the uh, things that have been talked about in the past regarding the views. William did talk about the loop trail. Uh, we're I'm very excited about that. And I believe that you received a letter of support from the Open Space Advisory Committee this afternoon uh, in support of what we're doing. And um, it was important for us to lay out the buildings and the site plan so that we could get that uh, loop trail that went around the perimeter that will be open to the public. And uh, we have uh, five different viewing areas uh, to the west uh, from that bench. You can sit on that bench. You can see the wetlands, Mount Tamapias, and you can see all the way down to San Francisco on a clear day, you see the Salesforce tower in San Francisco. As you come around onto the east side of the property, um, you have a clear view of Mount Diablo. Uh, you continue on, you look at uh, the Newell open space, and then uh, eventually you can look all the way up and see the vineyards and the um, hillside uh, north past Highway uh, 12. So I think that's a great amenity that we're providing to the community as well as the people that live there. Uh, from 
from uh, the way that we've situated the, the buildings, we're able to provide at least a hundred of the units on the top there with, uh, they can lay in bed and look out their windows and enjoy the one of those views either to the uh, east or to the west. Um, certainly from the family room and kitchen areas that generally walk out to an outdoor uh, uh, deck, uh, those views are prominent uh, uh, from right inside your unit. So residents living there will have the ability to enjoy the views from both inside as well as on either patios or decks and or uh, walking the loop trail. It's about a half mile uh, distance all the way around. If somebody chose to, they could go down the EVA road uh, that connects parcel A and B. And if you are uh, fit enough, you can make the walk up the hill and, uh, and get, uh, make it a great exercise uh, area. Also, I'd like to point out that the loop trail, uh, before we begin any construction, this whole project will be submitted for um, accessibility compliance. And so the loop trail will be concrete and, um, and will be ADA uh, accessible. So regardless of your um, level of uh, fitness, you will be able to enjoy um, the loop trail and the views that, that we have there. Um, we are also um, offering to, uh, the city has many uh, capital improvement projects that, that some of which have been on the books for a long time that, um, you know, we'd like to see improvements installed, but just have not been, you know, the city just hasn't necessarily had the money to be able to, to do all of those projects. One of which is the uh, sewer line along Teresa Avenue. It was improved up to where the senior housing project is. Uh, what we're offering to do is uh, pick that up. It, it, you know, we've seen the video camera of the, of the sewer line. It's dilapidated, the joints are fall, falling apart and it's undersized. We're offering to install a, a brand new sewer line, picking up from the uh, senior housing project run it north uh, along Teresa and then west uh, up to where it ties into um, the sewer line on Hess Road or Hess Road Napa Junction. The second capital improvement project is uh, uh, W11, which is a water line. And we are uh, proposing that we will upsize that. I know that the fire department would like it. Um, uh, to increase the uh, uh, fire flow capabilities. So we're offering to replace that water line uh, along Napa Junction Road up uh, connecting just past uh, Hess Road. And thirdly, when we um, constructed the Lombard uh, Crossing Industrial Buildings, we bore underneath the railroad tracks and extended the reclaimed water line over uh, just to the south end of the Lombard property. Uh, one of the capital improvement projects is to extend that reclaimed water line uh, south on Lombard and then turn west and go up Hess Road to the Little League fields so that ultimately we could uh, irrigate the Little League fields and, uh, and potentially the school property with uh, reclaimed water. We're, uh, we have submitted a fee uh, uh, credit and a fee reimbursement uh, agreement that uh, I don't think is ready. And I believe is only uh, that has to be approved uh, by the city council. And so that, that agreement will be going to the city council. But I think it's important for you to know that, um, that we're trying to, we, I, I always believe that it's, if we can get capital improvements done, it's better to do it uh, sooner rather than later. And I believe with us uh, um, agreeing to make these improvements, um, uh, it would be a win-win for both uh, the city and, and, uh, and for us. Uh, one last thing, the Napa Junction Road extension, 
I started working with the school district back in 2005 when uh, the city had asked us to join in on the Oat Hill Master Plan. We uh, worked with the school district at that time. They were interested in it. In 2012, we went back to the school district when we were looking at a potential development on top of Oat Hill for residential. And uh, the plan that William had shown you and that you have in your package was a plan that was um, agreed to in concept by the City Public Works as well as the Valley Unified and by us. Uh, uh, for Tammy, if you stand and look at it, it does have a, a sharp incline right now, but with the grading of that, it would be um, uh, a less steep slope than what it is going up Oat Hill. It would all tie together. It worked, uh, it, all those grades worked out at that time for the school district. Obviously now the school district's not going there, but uh, I believe that with that road extension, regardless of what ultimately happens with the school property, it's gonna be a benefit to that property. And even though we currently have access off of Lombard and Hess Road to get access to our, our proposed project, it's, uh, it, it's that extension is in the city circulation uh, plan. Um, the city's wanted that connection and it will provide for much better ingress and egress um, for Oat Hill and, and the proposed project. I've offered uh, to construct that part of the, I'm gonna call it capital improvement at no cost to the city. I just need the city to obtain the right of way or um, uh, easement from the Nap Valley Unified School District. And we will design per the city uh, specs and, and the city's direction. Our engineers will design that street connection and uh, I will pay the cost of putting that in at, at our expense. So those are the, I think those capital improvement projects are um, important to understand. Um, uh, I'd like to now talk about the affordable housing uh, in lieu of fee that we're proposing. We've been in contact with uh, and, and looking into affordability uh, for American Canyon. I believe that all cities need to provide us uh, all types of housing to meet all economic uh, needs. And uh, we are currently, we've been engaged by a company called CRP, Affordable Housing and Community Development. Uh, la last year alone, they were able to secure uh, some of the state uh, disaster relief funding and they, they were able to provide, uh, to gain uh, funds and, and uh, for projects in Butte County, Lake County and Sonoma County. And now they, they are um, uh, diligently working towards obtaining uh, property in American Canyon and uh, uh, because Napa County is expected to get another uh, reasonable share of uh, disaster relief funds for affordable housing. We have uh, uh, offers out on a couple of properties right now. Um, quite frankly, this afternoon I received a, a counter offer back that it looks like we'll accept. Um, and then we'll be able to move forward with the uh, application to the state. What happens for affordable housing when you're seeking uh, uh, financing uh, to, to construct those is it's based on a point system. And uh, you get points for design and proximity to uh, uh, transit and, and all these other things. But another big component is they receive points from a city if the city participates with uh, fu uh, funding for those projects. Our project, our in lieu of fee is right at $1.1 million. So what I'm proposing is we pay the $1.1 million to the city for our in lieu of fee for affordable housing. And then that monies 
would flow through to CRP um, so that they can use those points to gain uh, uh, a, a better advantage in, a, in getting those finances. So we fully intend on um, bringing affordable housing and having the units built within the city. The Broadway district specific plan has areas designated for housing and those are the areas that we're looking at and that we have, uh, that we're trying to secure the, the, the purchase of. And the next step would be, uh, we would receive a letter uh, from the city that doesn't, that that verifies that these properties are zoned for housing and that's part of what we submit to the uh, state so i i don't think it's necessary you you have the report from eps um showing the uh, describing why it's infeasible not feasible to provide uh units on site it makes much more sense to do it uh off site um None, not the least of which is uh, through an affordable housing project, we can we can get many more units than the 44 that uh, I would be required to, to provide, uh, certainly with the assistance of, you know, $1.1 million. So I would ask you to, um, to certainly take that into consideration um, that we're, we're diligently working not just to pay a fee, but to literally bring those affordable units to uh, life uh, within our city. In the design of our project, uh, you know, there are many constraints that we have to work with, many agencies that we have to um, comply with, whether it be air quality, um, the barrier air quality or the very water quality control, um, you know, it, the list goes on and on and on. And I believe that we have uh, successfully delivered a well thought out, a well designed project that will uh, meet all of the requirements, um, as well as the requirements of our general plan and the objectives of the community, and uh, to be able to, to provide uh, the much needed uh, housing that we have uh, housing needs that we have, not just in Napa County and American Canyon, but literally Bay Area and statewide. Uh, we're in a real housing crisis right now, shortage. Uh, we also have uh, RENA uh, requirements that will be coming up shortly, and this will help the city um, meet those uh, requirements of uh, ABAG. And in conclusion, I would say this project as proposed would address the region's need for medium and high density housing, furthering the goals of the city's general plan update process, and they will be consistent and compatible with the city's recently adopted Broadway district specific plan and the addition of multifamily housing in Oak Hill would assist the city in increasing its housing stock, transforming the areas surrounding highway 29 into the livable mixed use small town neighborhood that complements surrounding commercial office and residential development. And with that, I would respectfully request your unanimous approval of our project. And, um, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. I do have our civil engineer, our traffic engineer, um, Rod Stenson from Rainey that, that prepared the initial study uh, all available also for any questions that you might have. Thank you for the time. I was a little link, a little longer than I was expecting, but thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm glad uh, you gave me some time. I had some technical difficulties, so I missed part of your, um, your presentation. Sorry about that, but glad I'm back online. I was a little worried there. Um, commissioners, any questions uh, before I open public comment? Okay. You can open public comment first and then. Okay. All right. Um, so, without objection, we'll go ahead and um, uh, Secretary Jones open public comment. Is okay. Yes, we have um, 
Chris James. Mr. James, I'm asking you to unmute yourself now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so I just, um, Chris James, I'm a resident of American Canyon, about 11 years now. Um, it's, it's kind of an exciting project. Um, I think it's a good use of the land there. I would hate to see warehouses built up there. And um, one of the things that I really like about it is um, the loop or the, the trail, the loop around the, the property. Um, I've been up to the the, way, um, the tower a couple of times and it's just spectacular views. And I would always wish that I could take friends up there when they visit. So that was really exciting to see. And I think he's gone, um, um, uh, Rick S has gone above and beyond, I think, to add that and allow access. And that's a really exciting thing. Um, I like what he was saying about the affordable housing as well. Um, you know, it, it's uh, my analogy, I'm oversimplifying, it's like a food bank, right? So if you donate a can of, you know, vegetables to a food bank, someone eats. But if you give them a dollar, you know, the same dollar value, then they could probably buy, you know, three or four cans of vegetables or whatever they need. And they can spend it the way that they need to spend it. So this makes a lot more sense to get that housing um, in the right hands of people that can um, develop it for that, that more niche um, market. Um, but I do like it that it is a high-density housing um, that we have, and we, we definitely need that in the area. So I think it's a win-win for everyone, um, you know, especially these capital improvements. It was really exciting to hear that, all the extra things going above and beyond on the capital improvements. You know, the, the, a lot of these things are needed. Um, you know, once that, the Teresa water main is done, that road can be resurfaced. You know, people complain about that all the time. So it's, it, I just hear lots of positive things coming from this development, you know. Um, so again, congratulations on the, on getting through all this. I know it was a um, looks like a, a a big project. So um, again, thank you so much. I'll I'll close there. Thanks. Okay, um, we have Patrick Band. Mr. Band, I'm asking you to unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Band, Executive Director of Napa County Bicycle Coalition. Um, I have three items that I'd like to, to discuss this evening. Um, the first, uh, which will probably come as no surprise to the members of the commission, is uh, the lack of bicycle parking. Um, as we saw in uh, Mr. He's presentation, Oh, whoops. I'm sorry, Mr. Band, we're having some technical difficulties. All right, can you hear me? There you go, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. sorry. Um, as, as we saw in Mr. He's presentation, um, the, part, the project has 634 uh, personal vehicle parking spaces, um, which uh, exceeds the city's minimum standards, but just 17 uh, bicycle quote unquote stalls, um, which could actually be met with simply nine U-shaped bike racks on a concrete pad sitting out uh, somewhere on the site. Um, and I, I make that comment to, to state that the, unfortunately the city's code is woefully out of date and inadequate and certainly needs to be updated at some point in the future. Um, you've heard me comment in previous meetings um, about the city's adopted goal um, of 10% of trips uh, citywide being conducted by bicycle and another 10% um, by uh, foot, uh, by pedestrian, by the year 2035. That's not very far away. So when we see, um, you know, large housing projects uh, coming forward, first of all, we're very excited um, by those projects. We desperately need more housing in our communities, um, but we want to make sure that they're built in a way that can support um, those goals of uh, increased walking and bicycling in American Canyon. Um, so our ask is, is very simple. Um, a minimum of 10% of the uh, required vehicle parking spaces, that's 634, so call it 64 um, bike parking spaces on the site. Um, and we're requesting a couple things. One, that they be secure, um, that they be indoor um, so that residents can keep them out of the elements. Um, in a phone call that we had with uh, the project developer uh, within the last couple of days, um, there was a suggestion that people could leave their bicycles out on the, um, out on the, the patios um, on the second or third floors. And unfortunately, that's just, uh, it's a not a good option. Not only would people have to carry their bikes up two flights of stairs, but leaving them outside in the elements just is not a, a feasible option. Um, and also making sure that there's capacity for various types of bikes. We've seen an explosion in the number of people 
recently uh, using electric bikes and cargo bikes, uh, not just in American Canyon, but throughout the valley and throughout California. And we want to make sure that there's space that's capable to to keep those uh, those bikes available. We're not looking at something like uh, Barry Christian's pedicab, which I know you're all very familiar with. Um, that's definitely an outlier case. 30 seconds, um, Mr. Baird. Okay, um, really quickly, two other things we want to look at uh, this evening. One is ensuring, and it was not clear in the, the documents that I was able to look at, um, that the bike facilities that are being provided, the class two bike lanes on Napa Junction um, are uh, class two bike facilities bi-directionally um, from uh, the new extension of Napa Junction all the way to the project site. And last, uh, on the public access trails, and I, it's a bit of clarification that I'm asking for here. We certainly applaud the project for including this, um, but we'd like to clarify that those trails will be a minimum eight feet wide um, to meet class one uh, multi-use uh, trail access requirements. Uh, my understanding from a conversation with Mr. Hess was that they might be as narrow as four to five feet, um, which unfortunately is, uh, in our view, a little bit substandard. So we'd like Planning Commission's direction to uh, to have those meet class one uh, bike ped standards. Thank you very much, appreciate your time. Any further public comment? Um, we have two other people in the waiting room. Um, if either of you would like to speak, Please raise your hand. Okay, they are not raising their hand, so I'm going to say we do not have any additional speakers at this time. Okay. Um, maybe I will, um, since, since the last speaker uh, had a question kind of directed at the developer or the applicant, um, Mr. Hess, you want to um, discuss the the concept of the trail for for pedestrian and biking? I would first like to. Um, I did have a conversation with Mr. Band, and we don't necessarily agree, but we have. 70% of all of these units have garages. I suggest that people that have bikes, um, uh, he, he's referring to 10% of all the parking spaces. I look at it as how many residents, uh, residential units that we have. And we, we have garages that if people wanna park their bikes out of the weather, 70% of them uh, which is significantly more than the 10%, could park their bikes in the garage, whether they ultimately decide to hang them, whether they, however they decide to store them. I would also suggest that anybody that's capable of riding their bikes up the steep hill of Oat Hill, that they probably are fit enough if they wanted to carry their bikes up one or two flights of stairs to uh, for long-term storage, if they didn't want to keep them in the garage, they could put them on uh, the patio and or balconies that are covered uh, 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 patios and balconies. In regards to the uh, trail, it was never intended to be a class one trail that uh, like you might have along Wetlands Edge. This is... Uh, this walkway will serve both the residents that live there for access to their uh, um, uh, residents. And it's really designed as a walking trail for those people that, uh, that live there. Uh, not, it, it, it's not intended to be a class one that we would find uh, out at Wetlands Edge or other areas, uh, other places in town. Um, it, it, it will be used by the public, but predominantly used by the residents that live there and not, uh, not part of uh, any kind of bicycle uh, master plan um, area. Um, okay. Second, and, and, and thirdly, I would say that, um, you know, I can see people who ride their bikes to work, but they're certainly not gonna ride it down for shopping and, and be carrying uh, groceries on their bikes back up a hill like that. Most most people have to walk their bikes to get it up the hill. So 
that that's my response. Yeah. Okay. And just they double check on public comment for no additional public comment. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, um, I'll pass it to um, questions from the commission. Any? Just have a, a few. Um, so I did not read the whole thing. I skimmed through, brought my kids up there in the weekend. I said, what if you guys see big houses here? You know, like, How big? Said, like Disneyland. You know, kind of just having them visualize that. So um, I really enjoyed your presentation, Moyo, um, Mr. Harris. Thank you for providing such insight and um, detailed insight into kind of the plan and the history. Um, I've read through majority of the the um, the report and tried to understand, you know, what other usage of there. Um, you know, I could be biased, but I'm like, okay, well, we need more grocery stores, or we need more shopping. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like, if you build it, they will come kind of thing, right? So we start with housing and then other developers and other other types of uh, developing will, will, will eventually arise here in American Canyon. Um, so I really appreciate the, uh, the input that you have been putting in, into American Canyon. Um, so I just want to wrap my head around with the amount of units and amount of residents. Um, how many residents just would you, I mean, just roughly, would this, pro this such a project um, bring in to the city? Like two and a half, four and a half per family or? Um, well, the parks, um, there's a ratio that they typically use, uh, I think 3.59 per unit. 3 okay. So the 291 units about thousand and forty four mm -hmm. people. But of course that's just a ratio it could that's be a, yeah. Low. yeah. Okay. Um and then just kind of just with the design and the architecture of it, um just kind of future thinking, um are there any plans or anything for kind of just electrification, charging stations, um, you know, solar panels for the condominiums. It's just kind of uh, you know, being that, t taking that socially responsible step and kind of moving American Canyon forward? Um, I, I can answer that if you'd like. <laughs> Please. Uh, un under the, well, first of all, under the new uh, building code, we will be required to provide 100% renewable energy uh, for all of the, the power that is generated from those units. Um, Realistically, that's going to have to be solar. And mm -hmm. so once this project is approved, then we will engage a solar consultant. Uh, this is a relatively new requirement under the building code, but um, that's what we're going to have to solve that problem. Uh, so it will be 100% renewable, as well as uh, in each garage, we are, will be required to install uh, hookups for electric vehicle, and then we'll have some electrical uh, EV, EVA uh, or EVC uh, hookups out in the uh, open parking also. Perfect, thank you. Um, and um, so you mentioned for, for the, the community loop, is that you're mentioning it's just for the residents uh, generally inside. I'm just thinking kind of, but there could be other, it's not going to be a gated off area to enter um, like once you're going up the hill. Just uh, just kind of thinking, you know, for myself living in American Canyon, I would still have the opportunity to take a stroll along that that community loop and, and um, you know, oversee the, the bridge and everything of that. That's a, that's uh, clearly what the intent is: is to provide an opportunity for the public to go up and and we've we've put those benches out there uh, mm -hmm. at five different locations um, so that the citizens of American Canyon, anybody that wants to, there's no gates. Uh, 
We have sidewalk that, that will go all the way. Uh, that's not currently there. We'll install sidewalk all the way up uh, Napa Junction Road to the top. Um, there's uh, certainly on-street parking that would be available. Uh, it was suggested at the open space advisory committee that we might want to uh, put some signs up limiting, you know, maybe one hour parking to make sure that, um, you know, it didn't get taken up by any residents on, on long-term parking, but mm -hmm. that it would be available for uh, the residents. They could drive up and, and literally get on the sidewalk and, and uh, walk out and, and enjoy that. Okay. So every, so what, when you're, once you're like heading up all the, the long steep hill, that's all going to be parking? It could be, but it will also have sidewalk that goes up there. Uh, I'm thinking uh, more around the cul-de-sac at the top where it's flat mm -hmm. is where, uh, you know, most visitors, and I don't, I, you know, I don't anticipate you're going to have a lot of visitors all at once other than on 4th of July when everybody wants to watch the fireworks. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but on a, on a daily basis, uh, I believe that, that there's, I think we designated like 20 or counted 23 um, spaces. There may even be more than that uh, around the cul-de-sac that, uh, um, that the public could park at and, and literally walk in on the sidewalk and uh, walk around the whole complex. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Malari. Mm -hmm. uh, how about uh, Commissioner Altman? Do you have any questions? Of course I do. Please proceed. Um, there's a, just a couple of, of uh, key issues for me. Um, I'll start with one where I, I think I know the answer, but uh, I'll ask the question anyway. Um, Mr. Hess, you mentioned having no problem with uh, providing the affordable housing, in fact, looking to provide affordable housing uh, elsewhere in the community to uh, help meet the uh, arena needs and, and so on. Um, would you have an issue if we added that as a condition of approval uh, herein? I'm not exactly sure what you're asking for. What, what I'm offering uh, or what I'm requesting, <laughs> I'm requesting that you let me pay the city $1.1 million uh, to, to help provide that affordable housing. Well, and, I, and, and, and certainly, you know, there are many obstacles to overcome to, uh, uh, to get financing for that uh, affordable housing but I believe that we have the, the teamed up with and they've engaged my services to help them identify and help them with the, the process of developing affordable housing in American Canyon. So um, I think it would be disingenuous if I were in a position to be able to give some type of guarantee at this point until after we turn in applications uh, to the state. And those applications are due on July 1st. That's, that's when you can turn in applications to uh, secure funding for affordable housing. And it's usually a 30 day process. Commissioner Altman too, I think maybe your question is um, the applicant assuring payment of the in lieu fees. <laughs> was, was that your question? No, the the uh, I I understand the in lieu fees. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm okay. actually uh, more concerned with getting housing built mm -hmm. uh, than with the in lieu fees. And if there is a commitment um, by Mr. Hess as as was expressed to see that built, um, what what I'm thinking is is there a way to make that to that we can reasonably of course, uh, enshrine that commitment in the documentation uh, herein, so that everybody understands this is this is the plan going forward. 
I would like to respond to that. And that is, if you look at the EPS uh, study that is in your packet and that was provided, it clearly says that the likelihood of, of, um, of being able to finance a project of this size with a loss of uh, $500,000 of net operating income takes the project to a point that it's um, really not feasible to build. If that were a requirement that I have to provide on-site affordable housing, there's uh, I, I, the project, you would probably get no units built because the, the, the project as it, as it stands now probably won't get built because you can't finance it. Right. That's, that's not what I'm suggesting that it be on site. What, what I am suggesting is that you've indicated a willingness to provide the affordable housing elsewhere in the community. And I'm wondering if there is a way that we can address that within the approval conditions here so that there is a, a understanding across the board that that in fact is the game plan, that there will be um, affordable units built elsewhere in the city, not on this site, because I completely understand your point about making the project uh, infeasible because of, of uh, not the inability to obtain financing because it just doesn't pencil out. So that I'm not looking for it on site. I completely understand that. What I'm looking for is, is, is can we put it someplace uh, within the approvals here so that there is that commitment for it to be built elsewhere in the city? That's, that's my question, comment, whatever. I'd like to turn that over to either Clark, my attorney, and or the city attorney and see what their input would be on that. Okay, this is, uh, okay, this is Bill. I'll go first and then uh, uh, defer to uh, a three-digit IQ. Um, what I'd say is, you know, look, from what I understand, you've offered to do something with the affordable um, contribution that um, is a condition to go forward with that, you know, making best efforts. You know, it, you know, I don't know the precise words that you did use to describe that. I think one of the things is, you know, that agreement to go forward, you know, is it within the city's power to confirm that agreement, your best efforts to get an application? You know, I think you mentioned a July 1 deadline that type of thing. That would be the first thing that I, I think would be appropriate here to address uh, Commissioner Altman's um, inquiry. Otherwise, there are various, there are variables that involve other parties that go to what uh, Commissioner Altman's um, pursuing. But, you know, so what I'd say is you've offered a, a, a course of action that you would take, you know, that's certainly within the uh, city's power to confirm that alternate action as you've described it as one of the conditions associated with the payment for meeting the affordable requirement. Uh, this this Clark Morris from Council to uh, to RHS development. Um, so the you know the city code does provide for developer to provide an in lieu fee under certain circumstances, and uh, Rick's asking that we he be allowed to take advantage of those provisions of the city code. So that's the in my view what the authority is the city has. You know, Rick is offered to work with at least one particular opportunity to apply those funds to the production of an actual project. I mean, obviously the point of doing an in lieu fee is so the city can use its discretion to deliver affordable housing with those funds. I think Rick is willing to offer his assistance, um, but ultimately it's up to the city to expend those funds. And I think, you know, Rick's going above and beyond by uh, offering to work with one particular opportunity 
I don't think he can guarantee what states can do or what uh, that particular affordable housing developer is going to do, but it's certainly something he's willing to work with. But I don't think we can condition the project on successful conclusion of that particular business venture. I don't, I don't think I disagree, but, you know, mm -hmm. something that would indicate best efforts to go along with what's described, recognizing uh, the time constraints that were described would be something that could be set forth. That's something that the applicants volunteered. All I'm suggesting is that we confirm that voluntary effort uh, with the conditions that were described by Mr. Hess. I think, I think we all understand the variables that are involved there, but I think that's a good faith effort to indicate how implementation of achieving affordable housing um, can be affected uh, with the utilization of the fee. There's no question that's what the code says. But what I'm saying is um, there's a reasonable effort that's been proposed by the applicant, and I don't, you know, see, you know, see any reason why it can't be agreed why that reasonable effort can't be also confirmed in the project conditions. That's all. Right. You know, I think we, I think I said before, we all recognize the uh, variables that are associated with that. Yeah, and I think I think a commitment to make good faith effort, to, you know, towards those kinds of results it is going to be fine. I don't think Hess can guarantee a particular result, but you know, with that money, um, he can certainly use his expertise and his connections in the industry to assist the city in, in producing that kind of results. So we're happy to work with you on that kind of language. Yeah, and, and I am not looking for a guarantee. I understand a guarantee is uh, not possible. It's, I, I'm not sure how much you've listened to prior uh, meetings, but I'm, I'm sort of developing a reputation uh, for recommending, uh, you know, best faith efforts um, for local hiring. And again, there's no guarantee, but it's, you know, I like putting it in there, especially if it's being offered up, that, yeah, we're, we're actually going to do this. We're, we're not just mouthing this. This is really, we're going to make the effort. Um, we understand there's circumstances beyond uh, any of our control that may derail the effort. But, you know, what, I, what I'm ser searching for is just a commitment to make the effort. And it seems as if that's okay. So that's something that I, as we move forward, would, will be uh, recommending that we add in. And, and, and being in the community, you know, for just even with the shopping center for the last 21 years and, and our family owning the property for the last 70, uh, since 1978, um, I have no problem in uh, putting in the record that I will use my best uh, efforts in trying to achieve that. And if we, if we can simply just have that on the record that that I will use my best efforts. I'm okay with that. Good, thank you. Um, so I, I think I think we've got that uh, concern of mine addressed. And, and then second concern, um, which frankly for me is a lesser concern. I, I, I apologize. I'm going to go on for a moment here, um, but traffic is always a big concern, and we have gotten a couple of public comments. Uh, via email uh, earlier and so on regarding the uh, traffic issue. Um, now, I'm of the belief that the uh, number of units being added is not going to have any sort of significant impact on traffic. And I know you've had a traffic study done, um, and I would love to hear a little bit from the traffic engineer uh, who performed the study uh, in terms of their comments on on uh, traffic impacts of this project. But but I would argue that with the, um, hopefully it's still gonna happen in 2021 completion of the um, Devlin Road extension, uh, coupled with the impacts of the pandemic on traffic in general and reducing the number of uh, vehicles on the road, the, uh, I think the long-term alteration of, um, workforce plans. There are certain industries, professions, where obviously you're still going to have to be physically present, uh, medical field, um, you know, food service, and so on. 
but for office work, I think the uh, remote work is very much here to stay um, and will significantly uh, reduce the number of vehicles on the road. So to me, I think that while traffic can be bad and, and what I've seen is it tends to be worse at this point coming south in the um, late afternoon than it is going north at any time. Um, but the, the traffic issues are, are a little bit less of a concern to me personally, but I, but I am curious as to uh, any comments or thoughts on what I've just said from the uh, experts. Good evening. My name is Daleen Whitlock. Um, we did the traffic study for this project, and so I'm, I'm guessing that it's my turn to talk, so I will just jump right in here. Um, <laughs> the, um, the analysis that we performed showed that there weren't any significant changes in operation as a result of the project. Um, as we noted, and as I think uh, was mentioned in the staff report, the intersection at uh, Napa Junction High Road and Highway 29 is obviously not operating well. It hasn't for some time. It won't get any better until there's some something done to add capacity at that location. But uh, the project in and of itself would not make much of a change in terms of the amount of delay that's experienced at that location. Um, we also, some of the recommendations that came out of the traffic study were to extend the sidewalk down the, down the road further. Um, that was not originally part of the, the project as proposed, but there were some additional improvements made that, that came out of the analysis of need for pedestrian and bicycle improvements. Or, um, and uh, you were asking about volumes. It's funny because I've had a number of conversations on this very topic recently that uh, we typically do traffic studies. We try to normalize volumes and say, okay, what would it be like in 2021 if it weren't for the pandemic? Um, the fact of the matter is, I don't know if we'll see volumes that were being experienced in 2018-19 for years, for years to come. I, I think 2021, if we try to normalize the volumes and uh, ratchet them up from something pre-pandemic to say what it would be like without the pandemic, I don't think those are going to be truthful volumes. So I think that we're all going to see better traffic operation um, for those that have looked at the VMT analysis, the vehicle miles traveled analysis, the whole point of that exercise is to try to get jobs and housing closer together so that people don't spend as much time on the road during uh, critical periods of congestion and thereby reducing greenhouse gases. I think we've all seen that having people working from home, which is what you were just talking about, has dramatically improved traffic operation and reduced uh, congestion. And that's a situation that you're right, it's not going to change. Uh, I haven't talked to anybody who works in an office that is going to go back to their office five days a week. Our, our offices will not ever be full again. We'll continue to work um, two to three days a week from home. We found out that it works well. And frankly, as a traffic professional, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be walking the walk of the talk that I talk um, if we didn't encourage people to work from home. Uh, so the world as we know it has changed forever and in some ways for the better uh, from a traffic perspective this pandemic has definitely shown us that we don't need to be on the road every day traveling all those miles to get to our jobs and as a result I think some of the some of the concerns that uh, were were more harsh before are, are, are a little bit softened um, I mean I've, I've come to American Canyon for hearings in the evening before and I darn near didn't make the start time because I just didn't account for enough time to get south from Highway 12 to uh, American Canyon. And uh, that's, you know, I probably, if I went today, it would take me less time because there's less traffic on the road. So I think that the traffic impacts from this project are, are relatively minimal. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that the traffic is heavily southbound, if we can pull some of them, some of those residents um, off the road at the north end of American Canyon, it actually should improve things a little bit as they go further south. Because I, again, the idea of VMT is to get jobs and close housing closer together. And if people can live in these houses to work up Valley, as opposed to living in Vacaville or, or somewhere further south, that 
is going to take some some miles off the road and and reduce the congestion a bit. So I hope that kind of addresses what you were asking about. But if not, I'm happy to answer any other questions. No, it, it did. I really appreciate it. Thank thank you for that. Um, uh, and and thank you for sort of confirming uh, my thoughts on the uh, you know the one of the few plus sides of uh, the pandemic that that we're still uh, and for the next little bit uh, looks like still going to be dealing with. A little bit of a silver lining in that dark cloud. There you go. <laughs> um, so moving on to, I guess, another uh, issue um, for me, which which really is just to, uh, you know, extend a um, big thank you to uh, Mr. Hess and his team um, for a, you know, thorough pre presentation and more importantly for adding in these, uh, you know, various um, public improvement extras, uh, such as, um, you know, building out uh, the Napa Junction Road, assuming that uh, the city can work with the school district and obtain the uh, appropriate easement, um, addressing the uh, sewer line. And I guess this is the one question I have on this is on, on the uh, Teresa um, issue on with uh, redoing the uh, sewer line there, I'm assuming that would also um, contemplate the, and I may have, you may have mentioned it, I may have missed it, um, but would contemplate the uh, uh, recycled water lines as well. Um, and if not, let me know on that and, and how recycled water, because I'm assuming that that's one of the other issues um, and, and I'm not expert on it, but with the uh, building code revisions requiring, um, you know, solar and renewable, well, I shouldn't say solar, but requiring renewable um, sources of energy, I'm assuming that they're also uh, dealing with water and, and looking to, to um, you know, save potable water for basically drinking purposes and trying to use, uh, quote unquote, gray water for others. So I guess that's my sort of last uh, question uh, at this point. Uh, Mr. Elman, uh, I think that the Teresa stretch is part of a uh, CIP program and they have their specific scope of work and the recycled water uh, portion is also, there's a master recycled water plan. So, um, those elements might come into play, but um, actually uh, Public Works is here, so maybe they can <laughs> give a better answer. Uh, well, can we uh, unmute Paul? Oh, here we go. Go ahead, Dean. I'm Sorry. Paul Wade. I'm with Coastal, Coastal and Civil Engineering, and I provide development engineering services to the city of Merton Canyon. There, there is no plans to provide uh, recycled water to Mr. Hess's project here. Um, it's not in the conditions and it's not in the recycled water master plan to extend recycled water up Oak Hill. Um, he is, uh, has offered to extend the recycled water down Lombard and up Hess Road to the Little League field. And, and that is uh, achieving uh, the, it's, Assume we'll receive achieve enough potable water offsets that he meets the city zero water footprint policy through that project. Got it. Thank you. Any further questions, Commissioner Altman? Uh, at, at this point, no. I think that covers. Me. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Wong. Any questions? Um, I guess more comments. Um, I, I want to thank Mr. Hess for reaching out to me to discuss this project. He gave me quite a bit of information, and so that um, combined with all my fellow commissioners' questions, I don't really have anything to add at this point. I do want to say that I do like the project. I like the aspect of it having the native plants to support our local wildlife. Um, I attended the open space meeting. 
it was great to hear all the excitement from the committee about this new path. And I can under, I can see Mr. Hess's point that this is not meant to be, this really is more future for the residents after going there and seeing the steepness of Napa Junction Road. I can understand why they said Barry would be the only one able to bike up that road. Um, so it, I think it will be a great place for the public to go up there and enjoy the great views. It was said at the open space meeting that there would be some type of public easement written or given to the city to assure that we would have public access. Um, I, I didn't hear that mentioned, so I, but I thought that was a great perspective to add. And I certainly hope that Mr. Hess's partnership with the affordable housing group, I think he called them CRP, I hope that comes to pass because it does seem like that would be a better use of the funds to have that housing definitely built rather than just go into a pool of money that the city has stored for an unknown project. So I do like that that is happening in parallel with this project. And I hope maybe when next time you return to planning commission um, with the project, you'll have more updates for us on that. And the capital improvement projects, you know, they're not the most exciting thing in the world, but I think they do help extend a necessary framework for the city for providing water services to the residents, extending our use of recycled water, um, extending Napa Junction, you know, that's great. So, you know, overall, um, I think this is a good project that has many benefits for the city and, and the residents, especially the housing aspect. We have a great housing shortage and this will go a great way towards providing housing in our wonderful little city. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. All right. Um, I, I really uh, have uh, only a couple um, minor questions and just kind of points of uh, understanding. Um, I, I understand that there's, you know, that several, that the units have um, three stories and, um, and therefore none of these have elevators or lifts or anything to, it, it, to get to the top level, you have to take the stairs. Uh, but it did make me think about um, accessibility, you know, uh, dis for dis for the disabled. And so, if you could kind of highlight some of the provisions of the of uh, accessibility for disabled, um, in terms of parking and access to units. Every project prior to issuance of a building permit is required to go through a mm -hmm. third party accessibility. Uh, review and study. So the um, handicap accessibility units would all obviously need to be on the first floor. And then we will have a um, certain amount of required uh, handicap parking within our open parking areas. And all of that is, is guided by uh, uh, building code. And so we will be in compliance with all of those requirements. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, about how many uh, EV stations for guests will be available? It, and how many garages, therefore, how many EV stations are potentially gonna be established in the complex? <sighs> Uh, there are, are garages for 70% of the units. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones that do not have a garage have a covered uh, parking, designated parking stall. And uh, the honest question is, I don't know what the code requires for, uh, uh, and so all of the garages will have the EV uh, uh, charging inside the garage, but I don't, I, I really don't have that answer. That would come down to the- uh, This is Calvin, as I'm with CBG, the civil engineer. We will meet the code minimum for EV charging on both parcels. The EV charging for the open space stalls, I believe is seven stalls for parcel A and parcel B will have six stalls. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's that, that's the only uh, questions I have. Um, 
but uh, I, along with the commissioner's uh, other comments, I um, am excited about this project. I know it's um, been a long time coming. I know that there's um, a lot of uh, support within the city for this development to, to move forward. So um, I have nothing further. So I'll just open one last time. Is there anything else from commissioners? In terms yeah, if I could just make a general comment. Um, yes. Because one of the things that, I, that we hear all the time on the planning commission is, uh, you know, people's wants in the community. And, uh, you know, we keep hearing about people want Trader Joe's or people want, you know, this or that. Um, and I think one of the positives and one of the, one of the realities uh, that I just want to mention, because I don't know if people truly understand, is that as we are presently at a city of 20,000, something like Trader Joe's is not coming here. We are just not big enough. We, we don't fit their financial footprint. Um, if we grow, especially if in the neighborhood we're in where we have uh, on both sides of us cities of 75,000 people, um, if we grow some, we don't have to get huge, we don't have to get to 75,000 people, but we open up the ability for um, more of the businesses like better restaurants, um, like a Sprouts or Trader Joe's or Whole Foods type um, market and, and things like that to actually come into our community because we then have enough critical mass that the, for the, those businesses, we whet their appetite. They, they show an interest. Um, and, and so while I understand there is, you know, I, I am not advocating growth for growth's sake. It's, uh, that would destroy the community feel. But I think intelligent, well thought out projects such as this one that will help our community and will provide a nice, uh, bundle of amenities, um, are, are really something that, that you know, uh, the developer should be applauded for, um, and, and I hope that whoever's listening understands, you know, sort of a little bit more as to how things actually work. Um, you know, the city doesn't bring any of these businesses in. The city provides the parameters around which development can occur and provides approvals when projects are proposed. Um, and, you know, so so with that said, I mean, I, th I think this is a uh, very solid project that's been well thought out. Um, and that, that's, uh, you know, thank, thank you for letting me have the soapbox for a moment. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, now our work as commissioners begins with um, a lot of reading. So, um, Shall we just take it in order of what we have on our um, on our our support documents? Um, I I think we uh, should take it just in that order. And so, do I hear a motion for uh, resolution regarding the um, uh, MND? Sorry. Not opening up for me. Uh, hold on. Um, I'll make a motion to approve a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, California, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon one adopt the initial study and mitigated ne negative declaration for the Oat Hill project consisting of a general plan amendment, zone change, tentative subdivision map, and design permit to develop 206 dwelling units on a 13.6 acre parcel and 85 dwelling units on a 7.2 acre parcel. Number two, adopt the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. And three, directing staff to file a notice of determination, APN 058-380-008 and 058-320-001, file number PL20-0024 and PL20-0026. Great, Commissioner. And I, would, and I would like to add an amendment to that because I think this is the right place to uh, do what I was talking about. 
to add an additional um, condition, I guess, that the applicant will use best efforts to implement an actual agreement for affordable housing construction in conjunction with the in lieu of housing payments um, as part of the general plan amendment. Okay. And I'll this let is that acceptable, Commissioner Wong? Language. Yes. Okay, this is Bill. It's fine for the MND. I think the most appropriate place for, I mean, I'm not, you know, not yeah. saying not to do it, but I think the most appropriate place for setting forth the best efforts um, concept that was discussed would be for both of the general plan amendment motions. Okay, maybe I haven't gotten to them as I'm skimming here. I don't know which items yeah, they are. That's why I um, thought it was here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Um, I I was going to ask before we uh, did that which would be the best look, the best um, resolution to uh, make your amendment. There we go. Okay, so I I will withdraw it from here, and I see where I think it should go. So okay. cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion from Commissioner Wong. Do I have a second? From someone? Yes, I second that motion. Okay. And can we have a roll call? Yes, Commissioner Altman. Aye. Um, Commissioner Wong. Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Uh, Vice Chair Malari. Aye. And Chair Navarro. Aye. Okay, motion passes. So the next resolution is, uh, let's see, uh, for the, um, the uh, general, general plan, plan amendment, amendment, amendment parcel right? right? On parcel A. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I can make a motion, um, make a motion for the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon approve a general plan amendment to convert a vacant 13.6 acre parcel, which is parcel A on the east side of Oak Hill, south of Napa Junction Road from the light industrial with specialty commercial overlay and estate residential to high density residential. Um, assessor's parcel number 058380008. Okay, and this is where I will then go ahead and add the condition um, that uh, we have an understanding from the applicant that they will use their best efforts to implement an actual agreement for affordable housing construction in conjunction with the in lieu housing payments. Okay, is that acceptable, Commission Malari? That's fine. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All right. Okay. Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner, Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. And Chair Navarro? Aye. Okay, motion carries. So now for the, uh, I think the resolution for zone change in parcel A, correct? No, it's the general plan amendment for parcel B. Okay, we'll go that way, okay. Do I have a motion for the um, general plan amendment for parcel B? Um, I'll make a motion. Um, for a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, recommend the City Council of the City of American Canyon, California, approve a tentative subdivision map to permit the future subdivision of the Oat Hill Parcel a, of the Oat Hill Parcel A buildings into 206 condominium units at the vacant. Yes. Uh, the, I think I think we've, we're a little bit out of order. I think. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not on number four. Then we're on number three. It would be a general plan amendment on a 7.2 acre Oat Hill parcel B from a state density residential to medium density residential. Okay. Um, 
It's attachment six, actually, on, on the list. Oh, attachment six. Oh, I was just going in numeric order. Okay, so attachment six. PC, okay. Um, I'll make, a res I'll make a motion to approve a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, California, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon approve a general plan amendment to convert a vacant 7.2 acre parcel B on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road from a state residential, RE, to medium, densel, medium density residential, RM, assessor's parcel number 058320002, Final number PL twenty zero zero twenty six, and I will again add uh, to this the uh, condition for um, best efforts on uh, affordable housing on actually construction on actually constructing affordable housing, and on in both of these I will leave it to our uh, city attorney to come up with the uh, specific language. Okay. Is that acceptable, Commissioner Wong? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. Yes. Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. And Chair Navarro? Aye. Okay, so I see the difference. One is the way that the uh, entitlements were noticed versus the way they're attached. Mm -hmm. So I would say the next motion should be that. It's number three, the one for zoning on parcel A. Okay. Yes, and I will make a motion uh, for a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, California, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon approve a change to the zoning map to convert a vacant 13.6 acre parcel on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, parcel A, from light industrial with specialty commercial overlay and a state residential to high density residential. Assessor's parcel number 058-380-008, file number PL, 20-0024. Okay. Do I have a second for this motion? I'll second. Okay. Commissioner one seconds. Roll call, please. Yes. Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. Chair Navarro? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Mr. Ross, what should we take on next? Uh, I think I would do four was for the tentative map on parcel A. Okay. Um, I'll make a resolution, I'll make a motion to pass the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon, California, approve a tentative sub subdivision map to permit the future subdivision of the Oat Hill parcel A buildings into 206 condominium units at the vacant 13.6 acre parcel located on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, APN 058-380-008, file number PL20-0025. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, Commissioner Malari second. All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. Chair Navarro? Aye. I think we just passed halfway. Uh, <laughs> uh, which should, what would be the next uh, four point uh, no, five design point. permit? Right, number five. 5.0. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll yeah. take the lead on that. I will make a resolution uh, to approve. I will make. I will move that we approve a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon, California, approve a design permit for the Oak Hill Multifamily Project Parcel A 
consisting of 206 multifamily dwelling units, a recreation building with leasing office, 451 parking spaces, and approximately 94,000 square feet of landscaping at the vacant 13.6 acre parcel located on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, APN 058-380-008, file number PL20-0022. Great. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. Chair Navarro? Aye. Okay, is it number nine next? I think it's no. number seven, number the seven. zone chain for B. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a resolution of the Planning Commission um, of the City of American Canyon, California, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon approval a change to the zoning map to convert the vacant 7.2 acre parcel at on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, which is parcel B from a state residential to medium density residential. Assessor's parcel number is 058-320-001. Okay. I Is will there a second, second that motion. Okay. Commissioner Altman seconds. Roll call, please. Yes, Commissioner Altman. Aye. Commissioner Wong. Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari. Aye. Chair Navarro. Aye. Okay. Next, I think we got two mm -hmm. more. Yes. Uh, is it number eight? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I can make a motion uh, to approve the resolution of the American of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon, recommending the City Council of the City of American Canyon approve a tenant subdivision map to permit the subdivision of Oak Hill Parcel B into eighty-five condominium units on a seven point two acre parcel located on the east side of Oak Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, APN 058-320-001. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Wong seconds. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Altman? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. Chair Navarro. Aye. Okay, motion carries. So we're at number nine now? Yes. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of American Canyon uh, to recommend the City Council of the City of American Canyon, California, approve a design permit for the Oat Hill Multifamily Project, Parcel B, consisting of 85 dwelling units, a recreation building with leasing office, 183 parking spaces, and approximately 47,000 square feet of landscaping on a 7.2 acre parcel located on the east side of Oat Hill, south of Napa Junction Road, APN 058-320-001, file number PL20-0023. Okay, does someone want a second this? Motion from Commissioner Alton. I'll second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Alton? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Goff is absent. Vice Chair Malari? Aye. Chair Navarro? Aye. Is, I believe that covers it, right? Or do we have... Did we do the resolution for the map? I think we got it yes. all. Yes. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Yep. All we're right. All. Yay. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> and Mr. Hess, thank you. Thank you all very much. Congratulations, Mr. Hess. Thank you. I really appreciate your time and, and uh, thoughtful consideration to this. And I'm very excited. And I think uh, all of us will be very uh, happy when this uh, is completed. So 
Thank you. Good night. Uh, I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Before before you run, Mr. Hass. Thank you. Best of luck to uh, grandfather to be, yes. and uh, best of luck to your son Tyler. And uh, hope everything goes well. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to have a uh, beautiful baby on your hands shortly. So uh, congrats. Thank you very much. Um, I couldn't be more happy. Thank you, guys. Great. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So. That was a good one, a good practice of reading resolutions. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, could we have a, uh, like a two-minute break? break? Yeah. Yes, sure. Thanks. Let's, let's adjourn for um, a two-minute, let's make it three-minute natural call break. <laughs> Okay, Nicole, I think we could come out of recess. There we go. Okay. Although I don't see Brent, are you available? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay. All right. Is that three minutes? 
I think so. That was fast. I think a little more. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I guess the may, there. I don't know of any business, so I think we could go to staff items. Um, I am curious about. I'm imagining you are going to mention about the meeting about the moratorium on gas stations. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> the um, next council meeting on April 6th, there will be a public hearing on um, an extension to the 45-day 40, urgency ordinance. All of these time frames, 45 days, you might be wondering, what's up with that? It's all dictated by state law. So when a city or, or agency, municipal agency, adopts an urgency ordinance, the state allows the first time 45 days the second time, 10 months, 15 days, and the third time, a year, 12 months. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, you burn through 45 days pretty fast, especially when you have to do public hearing notices and the council meeting doesn't fall neatly on 45 days from when it was adopted. It's you know, something in advance of that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, April 6th is the day and um, the request for the council will be whether to extend the ordinance another 10 months, 15 days. Um, and so we'll have a report for that published um, next week. So hope the planning commission might want to tune in on that one. Okay. Um, so that could be very interesting. One other thing too, I wanted to uh, mention before I get into your into the list that we typically do. Um, is we've talked about a joint meeting with the city council. And um, I was just speaking to the city manager today um, and we've identified April 27 um, for a potential meeting with the city council. This isn't falling on a regular day for the council and, and not for the planning commission either so that you can really dig into an issue and not have distraction of other uh, ordinary things in the way. So um, I don't know if you're, you don't have to answer right now, but but um, that's um, a date that the um, city manager suggested might be a good one. It's um, an auspicious day. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Please the birthday. city attorney's birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a complete coincidence um, uh, uh, <laughs> the, way, the way you say that is it's Ulysses S. Grant's birthday oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, the day right before administrative professionals day oh okay at least you're paying attention so anyway you don't need to let me know right now but that's okay. um uh, just check your calendars and let me know if that works for, for you. Okay. Well, as, as of now, I can tell you it does work for me. Oh, good. Okay. I'll make it work. It, yeah, it'll work. Yeah, it, it works for me, too. <laughs> too. That's right. As a quorum. There. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm available that day as well. Do you know what the agenda would be? Oh, oh thank you for reminding me. The topic is... Yes. Broadway District implementation, um, particularly with respect to land uses that may be permitted in the plan that maybe you don't want, um, and other ideas to foster and encourage high quality development. Okay. Um, I, I would request, since this seems like it's related to the gas station moratorium, that um, we can have some extra promotion of it to our community, have some events mm -hmm. set up like on Facebook. And I know you do your around town newsletter, but maybe just start mm -hmm. putting it out there early. Um, if, if I can suggest that. Oh, you're referring to the upcoming April 6th meeting? The April 27th meeting, this joint meeting with the city council mm -hmm. and um, us. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Um, so if you don't mind, I have um, the list available on my screen to share, and then um, I'll kind of run through quickly and, and, and see if um, 
and thing is of interesting. So, um, hopefully, you can see it now. Um, yes, <clears throat> we can see. Let's, it. let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. Right around the time um, our last meeting, we had the Limos Point Apartments um, application. I think I mentioned it at the last meeting, but um, we are um, about to prepare comments on the project. Um, it's well designed. There, there really aren't that many comments. And um, the part I like the best is we're going to name all the addresses off of Fran Limos Lane. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> my favorite part. Um, let's see, we did get an application for a pre-application. Um, this is for the parcel just north of the um, Canyon Cafe. There are two older homes in the property. Um, and, and so they had an, um, an idea for retail building and remodeling the houses. Um, it isn't really fitting into the Broadway district plan zoning um, so unfortunately I had given them a, you know, kind of a discouraging letter, but anyway, that application, I think since they've received the comments is, is probably finished. Um, I don't know if, uh, if any of you like to like card games, but the uh, casino has a temporary tent um, out there in their parking lot. Um, that's been, you know, the, the COVID has just been a terrible news um, for their business. And so this is a way of being able to continue operating. Um, they also are going to be having as accessory use, um, a food trailer on the property. Um, and so they're kind of really doing a great job of, of getting things set up to continue operating efficiently. Um, so there's a lot going on out there to accommodate and cope with the uh, COVID. Um, I think further on in this list here, the city attorney is, is managing a request by the casino to increase the number of tables on the property. Um, that would be with, I believe, inside the building, but perhaps also outside. They do have um, longer range plans for more of a long-term outdoor uh, gaming area. So it's kind of a lot of activity going on at the casino. Um, not a lot of news um, from the Rotten Robbie folks um, and later on with the 7-Eleven. We haven't checked in with them since the urgency ordinance. I'm guessing um, since we've given them comments, they're awaiting to see what decisions the council makes on it um, for more than 45 days. So that's going to be coming up soon. Um, let's see what else is uh, interesting. The Giovanoni Log Logistics Center. Um, that's, of course, a big project of um, almost in same in size in, in area and square footage as Napa Logistics Park. Mm -hmm. And so they're preparing an environmental impact report, and they're moving along very well with other technical studies. Um, the project was very well done. Um, our comments um, for a project that size were, were, were very few in number. So they're, um, they really... Um, I guess in my words, have the rack together. It's good to see. Um, let's see, what else is new? Oh, the Hampton Inn Hotel, we did get their resubmittal recently, and we're just looking at that. And um, we just recently got um, a draft um, uh, market study. Haven't had a chance to dig into it yet. We've had a couple of big items um, occupying our time ahead of it, but it's next on the list of things to look at. Um, I expect we may be releasing that for public review pretty soon, get everyone's opinions on it. Um, but that's a, a big milestone um, in terms of the council meeting way back now in December um, when the issue of, of marketing study came up. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting progress on understanding the issue more deeply. Um, and then, of course, 14, oh, missed bad numbering there. But Oh Hill, of course, was tonight. Um, the SDG 217 project, uh, the Planning Commission reviewed that um, not too long ago, just mm -hmm. in your last meeting, and it has been appealed to the City Council um, and so by a law firm. So um, that is um, in the works to get it ready. Um, the plan is to recirculate the negative declaration for an, another new 30-day period. And so 
the plan for that is to bring it back to the council um, in, in likely in May. Mm. Um, and then we have, uh, I can't give you an update on our two uh, Element 7 and Resand. They're still on hold. Um, and then we're into uh, grading building permits, which, um, you know, they're perking along. These things take a while, a lot of steps in the, in the uh, inspection process. Um, the Napa Logistics Building 3, that's the Amazon Center. Um, we're looking at estimated completion for that in July. So that's pretty quick for mm -hmm. a building of that size. Yeah. Um, the Napa Junction Building 6B, that has been ready for issuance since September, the end of September. And uh, Buzz Butler looks, um, he's the owner of the property he's looking uh, for a tenant for the building. And he, I think he may have found one. Uh, recent conversations with him, looks like he might have somebody interested, which means then he'll, he'll issue the permit and it'll get building, which would be great to see. Um, Village of Vintage Ranch is, is moving along very well. Um, kind of got tired of doing updates because <laughs> there's so many <laughs> buildings. Mm -hmm. But um, that one is is getting close to having a lot of the buildings just finished. Um, so that's nice to see. Um, especially glad to see how it turned out. Um, if you think about it, remember back when it was um, kind of a, of, a, of a Spanish style from early 2000s and then it kind of got updated and kind of more tuned into the vision for uh, the Broadway plan and the architect did a great job and uh, it's nice to see it work out. I don't know how you feel, but, but I'm uh, go by there and, and, and I really like uh, how it turned out. Uh, I think it fits in great in that corner. Um, let's see the Fume commercial cannabis uh, folks, of course the planning commission approved that in January and they're working on their administrative side of things with the state and, uh, building permits and uh, partnerships and the like. So um, I know they're working hard. Oh, the other big thing here, Canyon Estates. Um, if for those of you mm -hmm. that I'm sure read the Amount Town, mm -hmm. um, they've begun construction. Yeah. So that's, if you think back um, to when Dick Loki, the applicant, approached the city about developing the property, it was close to 11 years ago. And, and they're getting started. So, <laughs> um, and I was on the commission then. Yeah. So <laughs> nothing great is easy and you can't rush quality because as you know, when these things get built, a lot of thought goes into them. Mm -hmm. And just uh, commissioner, Alden, as you've mentioned, you know, not growth for growth's sake, each of these pieces here are all very thoughtfully, put together and become a part of a greater whole. Um, the Canyon Estates is contributing um, a fairly large sum of money per house for affordable housing fees, because that was another one deemed infeasible for affordable housing. They're also contributing quite a lot of money. The, the amount escapes me right now, but it's, it's a lot of money for uh, improvements to Newell open space contribution. So, um, you know, these things are all purposeful um, mm -hmm. and they do contribute to a greater whole than just the project itself. Um, yeah. And so these things are just perking along. Uh, I think the SDG 330 warehouse is, the shell itself is, oh, well, we have a permit final here for a tenant. I'm thinking you know, the building itself is final um, and then they have three tenants. Um, looks like we have one that's finished um, I'm sure the others are, are close to being done. Um, the Napa Logistics 4 building, uh, Ernie, the developer, kind of put that one hold to work on the Amazon building. Um, now the Amazon's launched. Um, they have final that building and uh, expect we'll be getting tenant improvements. I understand, I think there's two tenants uh, planned for it. One will use rail access, which is mm -hmm. great. Um, we hope for it because it takes trucks off the road. Right. Um, home to Suites, that is very close to being finished. And um, so the applicant is um, checking through the conditions of approval and, and trying to understand kind of the system for 
um, reimbursements and cost obligations and things. But that's another one um, that will help extend Main Street from South Napa Junction to where it ends now at Antonina. That's a terrific um, mm. improvement that will be useful for the Holy Family Church, um, hotel, mm -hmm. the uh, other retail users there, um, at center. Um, so it's going to be uh, really nice to see that. Um, fuel station urgency ordinance. Um, I have it down here for 4621. Um, the council just at their last meeting approved the housing element status report. So um, it's due in April. So I kind of touted it the housing element income tax effort. <laughs> Spreadsheets and numbers. Um, so that's done on time, uh, which is good to do because it gets us in the good graces and, and uh, then enables the city to get grants and things um, for housing programs. Um, the general comprehensive general plan update, we had um, uh, restarted that. We have um, the uh, circulation uh, committee uh, last night. Seems longer, but it was just last night. So that's nice. A really good discussion. Went a long time, but it needed to. Because um, there's a lot of complicated information to digest and think about. And so uh, I was really excited about the meeting. Um, hope everyone else that attended it was as well. Uh, I think we learned a lot um, and excited about our next meeting coming up. And um, we also have um, set a date for the education and lifelong learning um, and so that's uh, committee is coming up uh, in about a month or so. So that one's going to be good to get going as well. Brent, I, um, I, had, yes. I, I had a question. So it's been a while and with the whole, everything being suspended for COVID and everything, um, approximately when do you think some of this might start coming to planning commission for our review for the general plan stuff? Well, by statute, it does require a planning commission review, um, obviously before as a recommendation to the council, but I do expect when we have um, some of the policies that are a little more gelled, um, it, I'm looking forward to bringing it to the planning commission. Um, we do have various uh, places along the work program where we do come back mm -hmm. to the planning commission for check-ins on some of these uh, sort of major milestones. Um, I don't have a date for you right now when the next one will be, but they are um, built into the schedule uh, work program at various places along the way. Oh, so we'll be, we'll be talking about it several times then, it sounds like. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that also seems like um, something to workshop with the city council. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, I think some of them are are already intended to be, but yeah, I agree with you. That would be um, that would be a good thing to do, and efficient as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take care of two meetings in one. Yeah. So um, you know, we're all about that. So um, I don't know if we have an update on the annexation over there in Paoli. The city manager, city attorney, I'm sorry, um, is spearheading that one. I do. Um, one of the uh, critical remaining property owners agreed to go forward today. So, oh, that's terrific and, news. Um, I think, well, it's just one where I think that uh, finally, uh, with um, his agreement, then the two remaining ones might sign also. So, uh, I'm hopeful. Great. Okay. These things aren't easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I think the, uh, let's see. I don't really have any updates um, for much of these. The, the LAFCO sphere of influence policy, the board began discussion of that in, in February, didn't make a decision, but I expect it will be coming back. Um, and um, hopeful that what I learned out of this effort is there's a number of issues that American Canyon doesn't experience, but other jurisdictions do in Napa County that play into this uh, policy. And in my opinion, 
much of what will be changed addresses those other issues. Much of what we need LAFCO to do on behalf of the city and at our goals will remain unchanged, even though the policy is updated. Um, so that's, um, I think, good news for us. Um, the a fourth item also coming up at the council meeting on April 6 is a joint powers authority within Napa County to uh, fund uh, greenhouse gas uh, and climate action efforts coordinated within the county. Um, and so that's an outgrowth from the countywide working group. And so um, council member Washington and vice mayor Joseph are on that uh, committee representative for American Canyon. So there's some progress mm -hmm. on that front. And that's my okay. update in case you have any questions. Yeah, I, I don't have any questions. A um, lot going on, even though we're sheltering in place. Um, we are, and and you know, um, on top of that, I want to say too, with um, budget austerity, we've uh, as staff have taken on more of the the regular discretionary processing ourselves and some of the policy work um, for the team to save some money. And uh, William has really stepped up. I'm really um, impressed. Tonight, I think, is a real example of just the, the great work he's been doing. Um, this is a very complicated project. On top of a lot of other, of these projects, you look along here, you'll see his name as the person in charge. And so he's got a lot on his plate. He's been handling it really well. I'm very impressed. I just want to re acknowledge uh, William. Um, so, uh, okay. Yeah, I agree. It was a great presentation for a pretty complex project. Mm hmm. Made it very so might say record breaking. <laughs> All those resolutions. Yeah, I was just hoping you would say, well, you can just do, we have this one master resolution. You can just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be, a, you know what we do? we paste all of the titles together <laughs> and you'd read it for an hour. <laughs> ah, no, no. Just no. kidding. Um, I did have a question. When, we, when you talked about having several meetings for the um, various, I guess, components of the general plan coming to the planning commission, do you have a rough schedule in your mind that you could share with us? Because, I, I would, it would be helpful for me to kind of give, get an idea of when to expect it. Cause I, I think I might want to go back and, and look at some of the existing general plan documents mm -hmm. and um, having some dates in mind always helps because otherwise, you know, just maybe help with the planning and stuff. So I, I, I kind of know when to look. Well, thank you. Uh, as a, that's a great suggestion. Um, I, um, I will go back and, and take a look at the scope and um, places where we have these milestones and um, kind of get back and figure out when we may be uh, ready to be bring these discussions to the Planning Commission. And, and when you do that, if you have suggestions of something that may be helpful for me to look at, I mean, other side from just like general plan, you know, whatever. I mean, if you have suggestions for like background context, would, mm -hmm. would it be possible to ask you to include a link? Would that be too much work? <laughs> Well, let me go back and see what, what we've got. Okay. Um, and uh, you're also making, getting me thinking too about, you know, apart from some of these perhaps formalized milestones, uh, it might make sense for me to also come to the commission. Uh, you mentioned, you know, background. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we don't like to bring something to the commission for a decision when it's the first time you've really had a chance to think about it. Yes. And so um, you're getting me thinking about the idea of maybe bringing some um, workshops to the commission where mm -hmm. we can talk about some of these issues to kind of get you oriented to some of these things. Because just talking, for example, about the West Side Connector, that is, you know, somewhat of a narrow scope, but yet it, it was a complicated, these things are not simple, you know, it's mm -hmm. not easy to build a great city. And so... All of these things do take a lot of thought um, and not just quickly decided. So I, you're, thank you for your 
thoughts and you're getting me thinking about it. Well, thank you, because I know even though I was here in the city when the last one was done in 2010, I was one of those residents who was just sort of unaware. So this will be my first time really mm -hmm. you know, being more involved in, a, in the general plan. So I'm looking yeah. forward. It's a very powerful document. So it, it warrants the attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for um, under staff items? Um, no, thank you. I don't think we have anything unless Nicole or William have something that I'm not thinking about. I don't, William. No, nothing for me. Okay. Okay, so then uh, commissioner items. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share? Any announcements? ESAs? <laughs> I, I don't have anything. I do want to thank you, Brent, for sending me that report, the AV1600. And Bill, thank you for sending that additional information as well about the um, permit fees. I found that very interesting, and I'm going to look at it in a little bit more closer detail. So many fascinating aspects of the city. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's not easy, and, uh, but yet I, I think most people don't get the opportunity or know something is there, and so you have know, great questions, and like, oh, well, here, how about this? <laughs> well, It's helpful. Yeah, because yeah, when I was reading the MND and I, I saw that Hess was going to be paying something like $5,600 per unit, I multiplied it out, and it was like, whoa, you know, how, how is this money used? It really got my attention. Mm-hmm. Right, I think, and that's just one of the fees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was very helpful. It was, um, I, what I didn't realize is how it's been uh, used to offset Prop 13. Mm -hmm. That was, um, I, didn't, I didn't think of that because Prop 13 has just been the way we've operated, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, any other commissioner items? Yeah, if I can jump in, I just want yeah. to take the opportunity um, to, because uh, we're we're uh, approaching school break for uh, winter, uh, spring break rather for the kids in school, um, which usually means we've got some holidays nearby. So I always think it's appropriate. Um, there are two that I'm aware of uh, to wish the members of the uh, Christian community a um, happy Easter and to wish Absolutely. the uh, members of the Jewish community a uh, Zissen Pesach, a happy yeah. Passover. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And also to you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, and uh, Chair Navarro, is this your, this is your first meeting to chair, isn't it? No, it's my second. Second. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's old hat now. Yeah. Well, good job. <laughs> but, but I don't. Yes, well, I, I was a little nervous. Well once golf, uh, uh, former uh, chair golf was not going to be there. I said, "Oh no, I got to mm -hmm. do this alone." But <laughs> I know. I, I know Commissioner Altman's there. So, yeah. All right. We saved yes. the record-breaking one for your second meeting. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But also. Um, and my only thing is, is um, I, I was, I, I did want to ask about the vaccination center and, and American Canyon's uh, plan for assisting the county with vaccinations. Have you been involved with that much or? Um, it's not in my area of responsibility, but I can um, find out more for you and send it to the commission. Yeah, okay, I think that. Um, Hopefully that gets, um, you know, we're, we're uh, getting everyone vaccinated mm -hmm. and sometime in the not too distant future, we can reconvene in person again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. What is the city's plan for resuming? I mean, have you, have you all started talking about that or is it just too early? Because we're just finally, I guess, getting to April 1st when, you know, more people can get vaccinated. Um, if you're referring to which aspect of resuming? <laughs> I mean, sort of like City Hall opening back up again and mm -hmm. meetings. I mean, is there like criteria that the city manager has in mind? 
Um, I think it's a little too soon right now since the vaccines are out. Um, uh, so, so I did get a note that everybody, with respect to vaccines themselves, um, everybody should make sure that they uh, sign up on my turn. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, and then also with respect to reopening, um, the guidance really does come from the uh, Napa County Health Officer, and so um, that's kind of our lead on on steps that the city would take in reopening. I actually like having the meetings via Zoom. <laughs> it's so convenient. Sorry, I mean, I like seeing you all in person too, and but it is very convenient, I have to say. Um, and maybe not for planning commission meetings, but I think for city council, I think having them on Zoom has enabled more people to participate that normally would not participate. So I, I'm hopeful mm. that the city will keep broadcasting them on Zoom, mm -hmm. even down the road later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Bill's puppy. I, actually, I, I recall uh, you suggesting it uh, even before you were a commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think continuing this. But I, I like it in person a little more, but um, but then especially like I had a little technical problem. I don't know what happened with my Wi-Fi or something, my, or computer. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyway, that's, the, that's also one of the challenges is the freeze-ups and the uh, yes. drops. So, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, but if, anyway, if there's nothing else, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? A, adjourn is always appropriate. Yes. You and can you don't just, need a motion. You can just yep. say. You can just okay. say. Okay. Adjourn. <laughs> adjourn. All right. Okay. Down. All right. Well Thank done. you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Take, Take care. care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.